All right. Hello, everyone. This is Josh, also known as Yashu, and you're just tuning into the 83rd episode of the TOI Talks podcast. You know, you can get this on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Buzzsprout, much more. And, you know, we're just going to get like started uh, right here and all that. So we have a returning guest uh, back on the podcast today who the last part, I think it was like back in like 2022 and all that, like when I first started, like more often and all that. And then, you know, since then, he's been producing, you know, he, he had a credit on like I think like an IG page and all that for like one of his uh, latest songs from like a well-known IG like influencer and all that and he's back with like another guest like on the pod as well too so we have uh, Nova So Fly formerly known as MK in the Cut and TGO on the pod how are you guys doing today man? Good how are you? Amazing man I'm glad to be back once again you know what I'm saying run this shit up. Yeah man I mean within the past two years I've seen like the growth like in a crazy way and all that with you doing shows and all that you know you being more active in like music with releases like even producing as well too, which is an amazing thing to see and all that. And, you know, even with the credits too, because uh, with Violet Myers, you know, she actually reposted your song via like the, N- the NLMG page mm-hmm. and all that. So I want to talk more about that. So to speak more about like Violet, uh, tell me more about that. And like, what was like that inspiration and creative process like? No, nah, this is going to sound crazy right now. <laughs> That's the first question, but I'm not going to lie. Um, Back in the day, like maybe like, let's say... Two years ago, or a, a, yeah, it's like two years ago, a year and a half. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I, I used to think she was bad. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, a lot of people would. Um, and then recently, um, maybe in like the winter times, right? I, I seen like she was popping a lot, right? And it just came to me. I had this beat down, right? I had this. This jersey beat down I, I made the day before. And the next day, I'm just thinking about stuff in my head. I'm like, yo, what would be hard on this beat? And then the lyrics just started coming to my head. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to make a track about a porn story. And then Violet Myers came to yeah. my head, right? And then I, I started laying down the lyrics. I'm like, getting this money is surgery. Yeah. And just doing the travel trap work. And I'm like, yo, this is tough, bro. And then I... Like, one of the lyrics I mentioned, um, my life's a movie just like a porn star, but it's the real damn version, right? Yeah. So I'm like, damn, bro, I, I super have to drop this. And I dropped the snippet, and I told I told my team to, yo, 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 help me out with a comment. Just tag Violet Myers in this real quick. And it didn't take long. It literally took less than a day. Less than, I, I posted the snippet, for example, if it was today, right? Yeah. I posted the snippet last night and then by the like the next day in the middle she she liked it and reposted it. So oh, I was that's... like so shocked. I'm like, no way this already reached her. You know what I'm saying? So it's like pretty like it's a it's a crazy experiment. Like that was like a milestone to be honest. Yeah. And I guess like even with that, like did it like lead to like other people like tapping in with you, like even from Toronto or from other like parts of the world and all that like getting like more fan bases like from there and all oh that? definitely i had a couple people uh, actually from well from her fan base um like hit me up like even give me a follow and shit so oh, and nice. like the track also oh, i nice. couldn't help but notice you're deep in thought probably brainstorming ideas for your next music project am i right yeah i've been thinking about shooting a music video for my latest track but i'm not sure where to start well, Max, you're in luck because I have just the solution for you. Have you heard about Y2A3 Productions? Can't say I have. What's so special about them? Only everything. Y2A3 Productions is the go-to for up and coming artists like yourself. They're all about helping talents like you win over audiences with their unique visual style, and get this, at super affordable rates. Affordable rates, you say? That sounds almost too good to be true. But what about the quality? Oh, Max, you won't be disappointed. Y2A3 Productions has a reputation for delivering top-notch quality that rivals the big names in the industry. Plus, they're all about collaboration, ensuring your vision shines through every frame. That sounds amazing. But how do I know they're the right fit for me? Max, trust me when I say Y2A3 Productions is more than just a production company, they're your creative partners. They'll work tirelessly to understand your style, your message, and bring it to life in a way that resonates with your audience. Well, you've certainly piqued my interest, Ava. I think I'll give Y2A3 Productions a call and see what magic we can create together. 
You won't regret it, Max get ready to take your music to the next level. And, you know, just like even with the other stuff too, like since then, you know, you've dropped like other projects like Never Ending Thoughts, like Lucid Dreams, like MK vs. The World, Broken Hearts, and like Sinful Thoughts with TGO. So like what were like those like processes like as well and like what inspired you to drop those? Um, starting in order. So I think uh, uh, the first one was, I think, Lucid Dreams, if I'm correct. Um, at the time, I used to think a lot about like, yo, I, I want a lucid dream. Like I see a lot of people talking about like, oh, I can do this and that in my dream. Like I experienced it before too, right? But um, it's not like I can do it on command. And uh, do you want to move the mic up for uh, a bit? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. yeah, so it's like I can't do it on command. But then there's like, there's this one dream that I had. I don't know if it was a lucid dream, but I was making a song with um, Lil Tracy. And in, in my dream, Lil, uh, no, Lil Peep and Lil Tracy was the one that died instead. And it was such a hard song. But by the time I woke up, I forgot my lyrics. And that just gave me like a little inspiration to just, you know, make a little EP or not. I wouldn't call that an album because uh, it's like, I don't know, like seven tracks or, or something sure. like that. So I call it a little EP. It made me like uh, be grateful, honestly, for, for how my music's turning out. And, and like, I thank God every day for being able to wake up, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely like, that's that was the process through Lucid Dreams. But um, the rest of the other ones, uh, which one was the next one on the I list? I mean, you also had like Never Ending Thoughts. So. Yeah, Never Ending Thoughts. Yeah, yeah. So that one's like, I would... I wouldn't say that was my breakthrough. I think my breakthrough was definitely uh, Broken Hearts and Sinful Thoughts. Um, but for that one, it's, it was like, at the time, I feel like I was probably like going through a lot of stuff at, at that moment in the in time. And like, for example, um, feelings, uh, uh, like not having motivation, for example, to go to the gym or just in general, not having motivation to do anything throughout the day. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? I laid that down to the best way I can, which is throughout music. Nice. Um, for MK versus the world, it was just a little three e uh, track EP, which was just, just to put something out there at the moment. Cause I was not releasing anything. I just, uh, had, uh, all my new releases unreleased, basically like kept in the vault. Um, and for the broken hearts and sinful thoughts, um, so this one's actually a pretty crazy one. So me and him, we knew each other for a long, long time, but we never really talked um, throughout high school. And I'm not gonna lie, uh, back in the day, we like hated each other, but it's cause of like a, a person that we knew. And then they kept saying like, oh, like to me, oh, this guy's shit. And then to him, oh, I'm shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I like, uh, we were influenced by like that person and we thought like oh this guy's ass you know what i mean <laughs> um until the day we linked up at a party and you know i came up to him like yo you know it's good man you're not even gonna t come talk to me whatever whatever and i talked to him and um not gonna lie we clicked we literally clicked and started chilling afterwards and i told him yo i make music if you ever want to you know what i'm saying if you make music come um we can do a collab and he he told me he makes music, so I told him come pull up to my studio at home. And from there on, we uh, we made our first song. It was called Long Gone, and we seen that we have a lot of chemistry. So like we're we're like a good duo, you know. And then we decided to drop Broken Hearts and Simple Thoughts because he was growing through some shit. I was going through some shit. You know, the best way to lay it out is through music. Yeah, and. You know, like a lot of like similarities too and all that because I think like I've noticed that from like the influences and all that with like the underground like SoundCloud stuff, like the emo stuff. So I definitely see like a connection like from there and all that. So no, yeah, I I also want to mention yeah he he does like the same artists as me, so that also um is a plus. Nah, for sure. And you know well, how was like working with each other like and like even like you know working with like Stacks and all that and just like having like that relationship like in that sense. It's pretty easy. With working with him, it was literally, yo, come to my crib, 
all right, I'll call you when I'm there. Pulls up. I show him, you. I made this beat. All right, hop in the booth. This is a simple process. Yeah. Even just like I play a beat and we start freestyling as a joke. Like, there's been instances where um, I had him on my crib and someone else, right? Um, and then we'd be making a whole track freestyling <laughs> with that one person still yeah, writing yeah. the lyrics, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 so it's pretty easy to work with him. Uh, true, and like oh, yeah. even like like Stacks as well and all that because I've seen like you've worked with like Stacks a lot as well. So yeah, no, I have I have a one two tracks with them. I have a couple unreleased as well, but you know, looking forward um, to working with them more definitely. I knew him for a long time too from high school. Uh, true. Both of them. Ah, uh, nice, nice. And to getting more into your story, TG and all that. So yo, where did you uh, grow up in Toronto, and what was like the environment like for you as like a kid at the time? And would you say you had like a great childhood, or would it be different? Uh, yeah, I grew up in Scarborough in the east side of the city. I would say in that particular time, there was a lot going on, like a typical Scarborough neighborhood, fights, drama. This person says this. Now everyone on this side has to go uh, do something to get back at each other. Uh, but me, I was always athletic and just naturally gifted in athletics. So my parents put me in baseball. So I was kind of out of that side of the streets and I stuck in baseball and I kind of grew up in baseball and that was what I was like my plan was become an MLB player and then um I would say my childhood was pretty good we went to a lot of places traveled a lot got to see a lot definitely had some privileges that a lot of my friends didn't have which I'm very grateful for and yeah Oh, for sure. And uh, which ends in Scarborough? Like, I know there's, like, Malvern, there's, like, B&E and all that. There's, like, uh, what, like, uh, Epping Cram, Epping Cram and all that, and, like, all those, like, other ends too and all that. Yeah, I grew up mostly in Orton Park. Oh, Orton Park? Oh, yeah. true, true. So, like, I know Orton Park, they have, like, a lot of people, like, Dope DQ, mm -hmm. uh, Rest in Peace, and, like, Push Keys and all that. Yeah. But was it a big place uh, for music at the time growing up? Uh, Most definitely, I would say it was a lot of music background coming out of that specific area. You know, with DQ and all the other guys there, even some of my relatives, they got into music, has released music, they do producing as well. So definitely a big musical background for sure. Oh, uh, sure. And, you know, what were you like from the start of birth until like now and all that? I was really out the way kid, to be honest. I was very quiet, didn't really socialize much, just did my thing, did baseball, did school, had my few friends. And then as in high school, as I was transitioning, um, and I started hanging out with other people. Um, I started changing, becoming more like, um, I grew up, I would say. And I guess like maybe, you know, just like from baseball and like everything else too, like it just led into finding an identity for you and to kind of getting like the idea of what you wanted to be and all that. And just like having like those like influences like with you and all that. Yeah, it was definitely, baseball was a big idea. That's what everyone really known me for was baseball. And um, at that time, I would also want to find something that would be known as my identity other than baseball, because if that didn't work out, then I would want to be somebody as well. Oh, for sure. And as far as like music and all that, like what did you grow up like listening to? And, you know, who, which were like some artists or like genres that, you know, you'd say would be like a major like influence like within your sound and within your discovery of music? Uh, definitely pop and rap like. I was first introduced to music, I would say Michael Jackson, who's who I was first introduced to. And I was in love with him as a kid, sang all his songs, and my dad would always play the old school, Biggie, Tupac, Nas, R and B. So I grew up with a lot of R and B, pop music, hip hop, and that really formed into how I make music today because I still take what I hear from those genres and help it influence me into making a track that I can make. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, uh, Nova, um, what made you decide on, like, changing your, your stage name from MK to Nova So Fly, and how did that come about? Um, so, you know, I was looking at myself one time, like, I was, I was sitting in front of my computer, actually, and I was thinking, I'm like, man, my name, like, it sounds, you know, it sounds all right when you say it, but when you read it, it sounds like, you know, you're reading M kind cut, right? And I had a lot of people um, read it that way, 
or say it that way because they thought that's how it is. And even like when I was back in high school, um, I had one of my, like I joined a, a Zoom call. This was on the Zoom times, um, like uh, in 2020-ish uh, times. Um, I joined the Zoom call with my uh, my uh, music uh, email by accident. Oh, true. And then the teacher is reading it like, uh, who's M kind cut, right? And I'm like, no, I, like I started laughing, but like, Ever since then, I've been kind of like iffy about my name. Like for a, st- a little bit of time, I settled down with it. Like I'm like, okay, no one, no one else has this, so I'm good. Oh, sure. But uh, yeah, so like one time, I just sat down. I'm like, this is not it, bro. And I feel like pe- a lot of people can't look me up as easily because they they might spell my name wrong with a D A or the right, um, and not be able to reach my music. So then I. I'm not gonna lie. At first, I used um, Chat GPT yeah. to give me some nice um, four words, or you know, what I'm saying something that looks sick and it's um, memorable. Yeah. And then it, it it said something about um, yeah, it was like Young Nova, right? Oh, true. And before I I make sure that before I choose I choose a name that no one else has it. So a lot of people had Young Nova. And I'm oh, like, sure. man, that was a tough name, right? So what what could I do? And I'm like, yo, I'm always dripped out. You know what I'm saying? I dress nice. So I'm like, I'm, I'm, t- I'm going to take Nova. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put something together. So I put Nova So Fly, right? And then I seen there was one more guy named Nova So Fly. We just spelled regularly. So I put two, a, uh, two A's and two Y's. Yeah. Nah, for, for sure. Because I know, like, with some people too, like, it takes time, like, in getting, like, used to a name and all that. Like, especially for me, it's like, because it's, like, it's been two years. It's just like, you know, trying to, like, find the name, like, appropriately. So, mm-hmm. but Nova is, like, a good way to start it on that because, like, that's kind of, like, the intro name and all that. And I think, yeah, it is, like, a pretty fly name, like, in a way. <laughs> in a way. So, like, and you th- if you think about it, like, I put some thought into this before choosing. It's like, Nova, so fly. And what's a Nova? It's a supernova. So my music is a supernova of emotions that's yeah. going to, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. If you listen yeah. to it, it's going to blow up. Like blow your mind is what I yeah. mean. Like a supernova would. Oh, sure. So that's why I even have my newest release, Supernova, because it's a banger. And it's just, you know what I'm saying? That's I think that's the track that's about to blow up. Ah, oh, for sure, man. Yeah. And, you know, as we talked about, like, Violet, like, earlier you mentioned that, you know, you were experimenting with different, like, genres and all that. So, like, even with the Jersey music, like, even with the drill, even with, like, other stuff, too. So, from listening to it, um, like, was it something that helped you a lot as an artist? Dep- um, and, like, on defining in, like, what your sound and what quality, like, means to you and all that? Honestly, nowadays I try to stick to the same three or two genres. Back in the day, it kind of helped me to to just uh, experiment with a lot of these sounds. Since I started off with emo trap, then I went to Toronto type of hip hop. Yeah. Um, then I went to some drill, right? So there's a lot of shit going on. Even of one pop track or alternative rock. Yeah. Like I was trying to expand my, my vault um, so I can reach different type of um people you know what i'm saying who who listen to this or this so i always have something for anybody to listen to but nowadays i realize like as good as it sounds it's not the best idea although it is good to have a um different genres so like i said people can listen different type of people but um it's good to stick to the the two or three max max three um genres that you think you are best at for me right now it's like the plug in b plug in b music um the trap yeah. and maybe the emo trap too you know that's what i stick to yeah because i don't want plug in b it's a kind of like a big sound right now like especially with like the whole like slave world scene, slave world scene and all that like a uh, summers like autumn. summers yeah i try to stick to the summer side yeah, shit, yeah yeah and then i mean like there's like a lot of like young artists too that are doing it like richard Mary, uh dom corleo um who else like jades like all those people so yeah yeah man. definitely I, I super fuck with the summer sound yeah, yeah. man not nah, for sure and you know since then you've gone to like reducing so how did you like get into it and like what made you decide on doing then like selling your beats on like beat source and all that well, 
At first, I was not able to make beats. Uh, when I first started making um, music, I I would just get a free beef off a uh, free beat off of YouTube, and at that time, like I was probably the the brokest I've been in Canada, and I didn't have money to ever buy these beats. So if I ever wanted to think bigger, I wouldn't have the choice because um. If I, uh, like let's say I post a song, right, and I come back to it a year later when I have the money, for example, to buy the whole beat, like the the wave, the stems, everything. And by the time I would get to that point, someone else would buy the beat, and I'm unable to use it. It's only good for SoundCloud. Now, to me, only good for SoundCloud song is not worth it like that. What like not like there's a lot of people who use SoundCloud, but not everybody's gonna want to click on SoundCloud. You know, they want to go on YouTube, Spotify more, right? Yeah. So, but afterwards, um, that's the reason why I started making beats, because I'm like, what's the point of me searching up, oh this type of beat, this type of beat, when I can make it to my own liking and to my own voice, what would fit me the best? And I don't have to buy nothing. The only thing yeah. I would have to buy is plugins. But there's a lot of free plugins that are yeah. pretty good. And charging to like the best free abilities and all that too. And I don't know if there were like any artists that reached out to you for your beats and all that. Yeah, or... definitely. Oh, definitely, true. Definitely. Have you ever had like major credits like uh, for some of your stuff? Um, well, I um some tracks I produce for the team. Some, um, not not all. Like for green beans, I produce. Some tracks with um, for example, if if someone's gonna ask for a feature, or I'm gonna do a feature, for example, oh, me and True's gonna do a feature, then um, I'll produce the beat. You know what I'm saying? Or unless they have a beat ready, then yeah, yeah. And I guess like I don't know if some some producers too, they'll send like their beats to like certain artists too. Like some will like even for like USB sticks like on stage and all that too. So. I don't know if you've tried doing that, sending it to like other artists who like, you know, within your influences and within people around you. Um, actually, not that I like, I don't be sending around like CDs. Obviously nobody does it anymore like that. So I don't be doing like the whole USB thing and whatever. But um, what I do nowadays is um, I go on Twitch. I stream. I stream listening to people's music, giving them feedback and how they can improve this if there's something to give feedback to. And even um, I help them try to make a beat or some shit, or I make a beat on Twitch, right? Um, and I had this one guy, once I was streaming, I had this one guy from the Netherlands. He came into the stream, and I was making, he's, he's just, you know, vibing on the stream. I was making beats and stuff. And I was, I was showing him a couple of beats that I'm making and whatever, and, and, you know, he tapped in, he, he copped a one, two beats, you know what I'm saying? So definitely had a couple of people holler at me, even across the world. So. Oh, for sure. And uh, with the gear, uh, do you mainly use like Pro Tools or like Free Loops and all that? Or like, you know, some... FL Studio all the way. Oh, true. I tried any, I tried um, GarageBand. Mm -hmm. No, that's my, not my thing. It's so like, I look at it like, oh, those are hard to use for me now since I'm so used to FL. Yeah, no, I know what you mean, man. And, like, do you have any, like, pet peeves as a producer and all that? Or, like, people, like, trying to, like, ask for beats for free and all that? <laughs> um, like, the biggest thing I would say, like, it's not, it's not really, like, um, a pet peeve like that where I would, like, be going crazy over it. But, like, so I, I do have my prices on the, on my bio, right? For example, on Twitch or Kick or wherever, even on my IG page, I have a a slide where it says um prices for whatever. For example, B, it's a mix and master feature, right? So like, I have a couple of people hollering at me like, "Yo, I seen your shit. I super fuck with it. We should hop on something, right?" And then they they give me that energy like, "Yo, okay." I'm like, "Yo, they probably seen my prices." I'm like, "All right, bet." And it's not even like I'm charging a lot. Literally not charging nothing compared to anyone else, right? And 
once I'm like, okay, bad, like, yo, we can do this. Like, I could make the beat or whatever. What type of beat you want to do this and that? I have a little chat with them. I'm like, by the way, I, I do charge for features and I tell them the price and they don't keep the same energy. So, you know what I'm saying? They just leave me on red or something or they don't reply. So why? Like, you know, that's, that's a little thing that I would call a pet peeve, like, like an ick, for example, you know? mean and i don't like with the city and all that too because like there are like a lot of people that tend to have like this whole like free mentality and all that or something that could like benefit them and all that and have you noticed this like you know even like stemming from like as an artist and a producer as well too that's the thing the a lot of people expect everything for free it's okay like the reason why i say it's not a big pet peeve because like yo if, if you have a good sound then okay i can do a one feature with you for free i'm, I'm cool with that you know what i'm saying it's not a big problem but um, just holla at me. Let me know what's popping. Like, don't just leave me on red. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. But um, yeah. I don't, other than that, I don't really have any problems like that. Notice. And I know we talked about like the whole like rapper type beat and all that too. Like from your story on like how you got into producing. But how do you even like feel about it right now as like a producer like in the game and if it like diminishes like the artistry and all that? I feel like I feel like producers don't get enough credit. Not as nothing like artists because at most tracks not okay i'm not gonna say most like maybe like 65 percent of songs that are out today from the underground the beat is carrying the artists these artists are not that sick and i'm not even trying to hate but like you you guys sound they're not is not that sick bro and you guys the beats carrying you and you're not giving like credit to the, those guys like, you, you guys got to do better, man. Oh, sure. Show some love. Show some appreciation. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. Do you ever feel like it's like kind of like a yes man like mentality and all that too? Because they feel like whatever they do, it like it works and all that, even though there might be like errors and all that? There's a lot of yes manning happening right now. Like, especially here, uh, I've seen a, a lot of it happening at shows. Like, I'm not going to, I'm obviously, I'm not going to say names, but um, like... There's a couple of shows uh, um, I was at where um, I'm not going to, I'm just going to be blunt. The, the artist was not it. Okay. Everybody could tell the artist was not it. Nobody's really vibing with him. But after his track's done, um, they're like, oh my God, they go dap him up. Oh my God, that was so hard, bro. You should definitely keep going. You're, you're, we should tap in, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Then, but in the background, like you can hear them saying, like, yo, this guy's ass. You know? Yeah. So it's definitely a lot of yes man slash fake love happening. Yeah. Especially here. Yeah, no, I definitely agree too. And I think like it all stems from like, you know, just the city being like big, but it kind of has like that whole like small town like feeling and all that. Like everyone knows everyone and all that too. And I think it's just, you know, the environment around them too. Cause like when you're around like people that, you know, try to dab you up like every other time and all that. Like people have like this like weird inflated ego that everything like works for them, even though like the execution still has to kind of work accordingly and all that. And I've seen that in like a, sh a lot of shows where like it has been like disorganized and all that too. So, hey, uh, Toronto is a weird place, man. I'm, I'm not even gonna lie. Uh, I'm getting shown more love outside of Toronto than here. Literally, if you if you were to look at my Spotify um, monthly listeners, right, most of them are from Finland. Hundred of them are from Finland, and maybe twenty from twenty from the U.S. and no, maybe true. like seven from Canada or something, right? Yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't really fuck with this city. If I could, I would move to the U.S. or something. Not uh, true. And like I've noticed, like there was like a post where like I think people in Turkey were like vibing to your music and all that. Sorry, like there was like a post like on on your page that said like people like in Turkey were like vibing to your music and all that. It, it was in Turkey. Is 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 um Finland? Oh, Finland, Finland. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I was kind of surprised to it. Even, even um, Israel, uh, oh, Palestine. Oh, true. Like it, it's kind of weird. Like you know, the wars happen, everything, and they're they're bumping my music. You know, it, it's just shocking to me. At least. Oh, true. No, I know what you mean. And I think this is just like I think yeah I've just have only like two questions from you left and I'll just move over to TGO and all that um but like the live streaming like how do you how did you like get more into that and how was that experience like you know diverging in that aspect of like content creating um so I started back in twenty twenty 
um, on Twitch. I just decided to make an account and see, you know, how I can take that uh, further into my career. Because at the time, was, as it was COVID happening at the time, there's, you know, no school, there's lockdown, Zoom classes, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. I have all this free time on myself, for, for myself. Um, and, you know, most of the time I was kind of bored like that. So I decided, yo, let me make a Twitch account, you know what I'm saying? Stream a couple of games and then maybe stream some, listening to your music feed and giving feedback and see which one does good, right? So I, was, I started off with games, but um, games weren't like popping like that for me. And I decided to do a feedback live stream and, and that was like doing good. I forgot, I had like maybe nine viewers or something for that one. Like I know it sounds little, but for the beginning of Twitch, like that's okay. I, I find that okay. And it was like an on and off thing for me at the start. Uh, and then I stopped streaming all in all. But then I came back to it in 2023. Because yeah. um, Cake dropped. And people were saying like, yo, Cake, you can make money on this. Just stream. But then you check over there and you need this and that. Like, this this is required. Yeah. That's required. It's hard to me. Um, so I decided to try on Kick, maybe see if it's better than Twitch. Um, a couple of streams went good, nothing crazy, but um, it, well, I wasn't seeing motion like that. So yeah. I hopped back on Twitch, um, and I would alternate back and forth because I didn't know what I should stick with um, with games. Right, I didn't do none of the um, feedback streams at this time, and then. This week, I decided, I'm like, yo, I'm going to stream on Twitch. And I'm like, yo, the feedback shit was popping back in the day. Let me just see, yeah. you know, if it's good right now. Because yeah. I feel like I could do some. I started up my first feedback uh, stream four days ago. I think four, yeah, three or four. Bro, I was stuck at like 30 seven followers or 36 oh, followers true. right something like that my first stream i get 13 followers or 12 followers um and i had like nine viewers or some shit right so i'm like it was it started popping so yeah. i did the feedback the next day the next day and and yesterday and they're all going crazy and they're sticking till the end you know what i'm saying so i the, that's how the career is like going right now. Yeah, like I'm, I think I'm gonna stick to Twitch. Yeah. Um, do these music feedbacks as people love it. You know, yeah. they they love to um, get feedback and um, just be a part of a little underground community. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Like what I could say about the whole like Twitch versus like kick cuffing and all that, because I know with some streamers too, like there's like two types, like ones that do it as like a full time thing and all that, like where like money has to be on the table. Like that's where like they're getting their money from. Yeah. And others that have like another passion like somewhere else and all that too. So I think like it kind of depends. So like usually with some people that have like a half on, half off like a passion, like you might have to uh, like work with like other collaborators, like maybe who are exclusive only on Twitch or kick to maybe even like get like some like viewership and all that too. I feel like that could also work. And other other times it's like dividing like what you have to give your most like attention to and all that. And, like, as you said, like, knowing what works and all that, because with you, like, the music review thing, like, it might have worked for you. With others, mm -hmm. it could be, like, just, like, having some, someone over or, like, outdoor, like, IRLs and all yeah, that, too. Yeah, so, yeah. it all, like, depends on the creativity and all that. No, definitely. I think tapping in with different uh, streamers definitely helps. Yeah. I even seen um Instagram posts before about it. Like, oh, if you're if you're a small creator, you should definitely tap in with a, a creator about the same size yeah. of yours. Yeah, I just yeah. actually had um a kick streamer uh, just a while back on the pod uh, named Tenacious, who's actually based in Toronto and all that. And I know of him, like he put like a lot of passion like within his like streams and all that, going mm -hmm. to different areas, tapping with different fan bases, and it's like knowing like what works and all that. Like in a sense, no, so. definitely, it does matter to know what. That's why that's why you check out. Um, this day you do games. This day you do music. This day you do IRL and see what does the best for you and stick to that. For sure, man. And do you feel that you've grown as an artist from the start until now? And if, like, life has, like, changed for you, like, in a way from, like, a violet blowing up to, like, other, like, things, like, going on? 
Yeah, so definitely I I, I wanted to um, say this when I uh, when you asked me about my name change. Um, when I changed my name, everything went differently. My whole career just changed in a good way. Like random people, like I post a couple of YouTube shorts, TikToks, random people come DM me like, yo, I seen you on YouTube, bro, your shit fire, tap in, whatever. Random guy, I don't even know, commenting on them, I say, yo, yo, Nova doesn't miss, whatever, whatever, you know what I mean? So it's like, I feel like having a good name definitely does a lot to your career. And ever since I started making music, I was MK, right? Either young MK until I stuck with um, MK in the cut. Uh, although it was a good run, but I do feel like Nova's way better, and it definitely helped me elevate everything. Uh, for sure, and yeah. I've definitely seen that with like the whole NLM chief thing and all that. To Violet posting your stuff and all that. Mm-hmm. To like even like the name change too. Like it's amazing to see, and you know I'm glad to see you know your rise as an artist like become like good for the better and all that. You know, no, definitely it's good to be back over here too, man. It's yeah. been a while, man. <laughs> yeah, likewise, man. And getting back onto your story, like TGO, um, how did you get into like rapping and making music and all that? Um, so actually, I used to just listen to a bunch of. So I would say Juice World will help me get into music because I would just listen to his songs nonstop. There's a lot of songs where he ends his verse and has like the beat playing 30, 45 seconds. So I'd just be freestyling and trying to come up with lyrics and then I'd send it to my friends and then be like, oh, you have to make songs, make songs. So then I started, I downloaded BandLab on my phone and I had a gaming headset and then I made a couple songs on there. And then that's actually when me and M- uh, Nova had actually met and I showed him a couple of my songs. And then that's when he's like, you got to pull up, you can make some songs, tap in. That's how we started the Broken Hearts and Simple Thoughts album. Oh, but sure. I would say Juice World really helped me get into rapping. Yeah, no, for sure, man. And as far as like family, like, or like anyone else, have you ever had like family or friends that like made like music before? Uh, yeah, my uncles, my dad, uh, godfathers, they all had made music. Um, my uncle still produces music, one of my uncles. He has his own little studio. But yeah, definitely, they did do some music. Uh, likewise, man. And uh, what inspired you to become like a rapper and artist and like, even like take it seriously? Um, to be honest, after baseball started going downhill is when I started just using the mic as a place to vent and hearing people telling me that I'm good at what I'm doing on the mic and that like my music invokes emotion made me want to start taking it more seriously, making more songs, grinding and getting back in the stew. Yeah, for sure, man. And aside from like Juice World, um, who else were you like mainly like influenced by and like who would you like to work with some day? I would say J. Cole, a lot of J. Cole. I really like the way he lays down his verses, tells a story, the way he flows. I would say Kendrick as well, and a lot of Lil Baby, 21 Savage, all Migos, all the older popular artists had influenced me. Yeah, for sure, man. And, you know, just speaking about J. Cole and, like, Kendrick uh, right now, how do you feel about, like, the stuff going on in music with, like, J. Cole, Kendrick, Drake, Future, going, like, all at once? I feel like it's all crazy because, like, they're all really good artists and they all have done astronomical things in the mu- music industry so it's like why not all take your awards and take your uh flowers and be humble about it and not have to go at each other yeah how about you man no nah, honestly it's kind of weird why well, like uh even um if you've seen uh asap rocky yeah. he, he did drake right yeah but then there's a video going around of asap rocky saying that drake made him basically like he put him on so he's forever thankful for Drake. But now he wants to diss him. Yeah. And even J. Cole switching sides. Like that's I feel like these artists, these they're they're just cappers, bro. Yeah. It's, it just seems to me like they're they're just cappers. They fake love. Yeah. So, Do you feel like it's more like the label doing it? Because I know um in some cases too, some people will assume everyone's like under like the same label or like distribution team, like Universal or Sony and all that. And I think they're just like playing at odds to kind of distract the audience and all that like in a way i mean maybe this could be a little 
move from you know the uh, industry to uh, fool us and have a reaction and you know them to l- have a lot of album sales or something you know maybe it could be that but yeah. if it's not like it just it just seems fishy like why are you switching sides or why even yeah. trying to you know say that drink made you basically but then now nah, you want to diss him so it doesn't add up to how you move you know yeah i agree even with the kendrick song like it just dropped out of nowhere like no one expected that to happen yeah. So it doesn't seem too far fetched to think that yeah. labels could be doing something. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. There, there was like a surprise too because I know Future and Metro are performing at Scotiabank Arena on the 11th. So like around the same time, like Carabana and like other events tend to happen over UFS too. So hey, it could be coincidence or I think something's spotting up for a bit too. So who knows? Yeah, I think they want to be petty. <laughs> they just want to be petty because of Drake, and then they just want to pull yeah. out to Toronto and do that. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, even getting back onto your music right now, like, what's your creative process like when making music? And what would, like, a day in the stew be like for you? Um, A day in the stew looks like for me. So I'll plan this, like, a day in advance. I'll wake up, have, like, a vision of what I want in my head, like, either a beat, a sound, lyrics, and I'll just be thinking about it the probably first two, three hours of my day. And then I'll go and try to find a beat on YouTube. Or I'll hit Nova up and ask him, let's make a beat and let's get a track going. And then I'll pull up to the stew, play the beat, and it's either we instantly just start freestyling or words just come to my head and I hop in the booth and I just get on a song. And usually I punch. I tend to punch in a lot because I don't tend to write. If I do write, then it's usually a song that like I've been thinking about for a while I want a lot of people to relate to. But I punch in, freestyle. That's really my creative process. Hear a beat and freestyle. For sure, man. Even the, my bad to, to um, ball gen. Uh, even if you look at uh, Broken Hearts and Sinful Thoughts, most of them is literally freestyles. Oh, true. Was it also like the same for like Wealthy like Wounds and all that? Yes, oh, same true. for Wealthy Wounds. Well, well for Wealthy Wounds, I kind of had more of a projected idea with the songs that went on there. And I wrote those songs because those have been some like older songs that I made from off of band lab that I hadn't produced in a studio yet. Nah, for sure, man. That's pretty interesting in a way too. And even like with your stage name as well too, uh, tell me more about like how you managed to, to get that name, like TGO. So uh, a lot of people call me TJ. And as you know, there's a lot of rappers that have TJ. Like there's, there's no way me personally, I think I could beat the name Lil TJ. So um, just taking the rest of my initials, I just added the O onto the TJ. And um, when I search up TJO, there's maybe a couple of people, but they're like not known at all. So I said, I'm going to make that my name since it is literally my name. Oh, for sure, man. And, you know, just getting onto like the closing topics so right now, I actually have like one in mind for a little bit too. So like, I know you guys are more like on SoundCloud and all that, like you kind of like prefer that. Do you prefer that over, like, other platforms like Spotify or YouTube and all that, or it's, like, a neutral feeling? Uh, For me, it's more so of a neutral feeling. I feel like um, I wanted to build up a fan base on SoundCloud and then move over to Spotify or have, like, a breakthrough album on SoundCloud, and then the next album that I would produce or the next song would go onto Spotify and where I would be more popular and whatnot. <clears throat> I'm sure. I think... um. Spotify is probably better than SoundCloud for getting noticed. I realized because um, on SoundCloud, it doesn't have a lot of discoverability. Spotify pushes you, puts you on playlists. And that's how I even have so much um, monthly listeners. So they put me on the radio playlist, right? Yeah. Um, so I do think... Like SoundCloud's good, but like I don't like how they have the paid um the paid wall for you to go over two hours worth of songs. So what, I can't upload anymore just because you know they they yeah. want you to pay twenty dollars plus tax every month just to use the free stuff already yeah. and just to upload more. Yeah. While um you could go on DistroKid. DistroKid um, well how much is it twenty five. A year, every year, yeah. and you do 
post it wherever you want. Yeah, no, not sure. twenty five a, a month. So yeah. I'm kind of iffy about SoundCloud, but that is where I started, so I can't really complain. No, for sure. And I think for me, like in my opinion too, like as a user and all that, like I think with SoundCloud, I just for me, I used to like the lay- a layout a lot more, like when I was like, younger and all that, but. You know, getting used to Spotify and like Apple Music more and all that. Like, I think I prefer their layout and just adding like songs and all that type of stuff, like to playlists and to other stuff too, because I feel like it's more natural. It's more like cleaned out and all that. With I think with SoundCloud too, you can't even like listen to certain songs unless you're on the spot, the SoundCloud like Go like platform, like if you're using their Go services. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like you can only listen to it like if it's like an exclusive track that you can't find on spotify or apple music and all that so i think the i think soundcloud all in all was better when it had the orange icon the or og orange icon yeah, yeah yeah and i think like when like they had like many rappers like pull through like x juice world yeah i think like it was like more for a preferred way and all that too i think now it's like there are people that do like to post on soundcloud but it's like exclusives or stuff like only like that can't be posted like on mm-hmm. label and all that so yeah yeah man. and uh you know, for everyone that I'm asking for, like, this year and all that, too, like, you know, usually for people, like, they want to, like, tap in more into, like, music and all that, you want to get, like, new monthly listeners and all that, too. So, for the stuff that's on Spotify or YouTube or on SoundCloud, like, name free songs in your catalog that's either on one of them that you would recommend for any person that has, like, not heard about you before or that would like to know more about you. I would say the first song I would recommend them listen to is Supernova with me and Nova, that song is a banger. And the second song, I would say Scene also, with me, Nova, and Stax. And then the third song, I would have to say Grind Again from my SoundCloud album, Wealthy Wounds. Um, I also got to go with number one is Supernova. Um, We do have a sequel coming, actually two sequels coming. Um, Definitely stay tuned for that. Um, I can't say unreleased, although I would definitely say some unreleased right now. But um, for my number two, probably Dreadflow. Um, and number three, we're gonna bring it back to like a low plug and be probably like I know, it's an OG track, so definitely. But number one, Supernova, for sure. And uh, do you guys have any like closing remarks you'd like to say? Um, yeah, you can, you can start. So. Just follow me on Instagram, T-E-J-E-A-N-0. Tap in, view the SoundCloud. So in the bio, Spotify links for all our tracks is in the bio as well. Um, definitely stay tuned for the unreleased. I, I'm thinking of dropping an album. There's so many songs I have, um, unreleased is definitely enough for an album. Um, our music video just dropped a month ago for Supernova. We'll definitely check that out. We also have the Lucas Guitar Remix coming out um, on May 14th. Um, also, just, you know, show some love. Hey, it's free. It's free to hit the subscribe yeah. or the follow button, man. You know what I'm saying? Definitely tap and show some love to your artists in your city. Because, you know, real realistically... Like yeah. NBA young boy, happy birthday! You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they're posting them with yeah. hard eyes and yeah, shit. Man, I'm not even saying woman. Man's are posting NBA young boy with hard eyes, <laughs> happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But they're not showing love to their own brothers or cousins making music. So how are you gonna like? You know what I'm saying? Not do that for someone who doesn't even care about you or doesn't know you, but not for your the people that you know. That's all. Yeah, no, I definitely agree too. And the Lucas one, that was the guy that worked with uh, Lowry, like on one of the songs, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's uh, dope to see and all that. And, you know, Nova and like TGO, you know, thank you for like coming up. Thank you for coming to the pod and all that. Nova, thank you for coming back no, no problem, again no. to we like tap through and all here, that. Man. Yeah, man, it was a thank pleasure having you having guys and all that. Yeah, thank you for having us. And hey, give us a follow. And follow Josh right here, man. Of course, make sure to tap in. Make sure yeah, to man. tap in, bro. If you want a podcast, tap in, bro. You're missing out. Yeah, man, and this is Josh, also known as Yashu, episode 83 of TLY Talks. I can't really say more, but, like, it's been uh, dope to have everyone on here and all that so far, too. You know, thank you for tapping into this episode. You know, you can get this on all platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Buzzsprout, much more. This is episode three with me, with Nova Soul Fly, with TJO on TLY Talks, signing off. Is it enough?